Greetings, my dear viewers. It is I, Drehon, and welcome back to another Dungeons and Dragons character concept. Today is a response video to another miraculous YouTuber, Constructed Chaos, and their video on their uh, secret artillerist upgrade video. This is honestly a pretty good build, however, it being the best artillerist upgrade, not really. Artificer upgrade, yes. Artillerist, eh, not exactly. There are definitely better choices for multi-classing into artificer than going artillerist artificer. Now, is that to say that artificer cleric is a bad multi-class combination? Absolutely not. It is a really good multi-class combination. However, Constructed Chaos said that this was the ultimate support build, and that is where I have to respond. Because there are certainly better ways of making the Artificer Cleric an optimal support build. And the way that Constructed Chaos did it, although really good, is not the most optimal. What set of classifications would make the Artificer Cleric optimal? That's what we're going to find out today. This is a very similar concept to my Sorlock build, and I have already had plans on doing more multi-class combinations similar to what I did for the Sorcerer Warlock min-maxed build. So I'm going to go ahead and take a jab at this concept of an Artificer Cleric and see if we can get an optimized support character. And much like with the Sorlock build, we need to meet a set of goals. Much like with the last build with my Sorcerer Warlock, we need to hit these goals. We need to find the race background artificer is going to need to have the following item infusions subclass and a number of levels cleric only needs a subclass and number of levels but we also need to find the right feats for this build now there are also some other goals we need to look at because we are looking at creating the most optimized support class for the Artificer Cleric. We need a good name for the Artificer Cleric. Um, Artifolic? Clarificer? You know what, let's just go with Tech Priest. One, to reference Warhammer 40k, and two, because there is no good name combination in Dungeons & Dragons terms. Going Tech Priest sounds a lot better. Anyway, for our Tech Priest, for a good support class, we need good healing, of course. But that's not all we need. We need to be able to get to our party members to be able to heal them. If we cannot heal them, they cannot continue fighting. If they go down before us, then we need to be able to heal them. However, if we go down before we can heal them, the whole party is dead at a TPK. So we need to have the following in order of importance. High AC. High dexterity saves. High HP. We also need to be a good heal bot. And we need to be able to take damage and dish out good 
damage. We are essentially making a tank. A walking, talking tank build with a medkit. So yeah, we need to complete these goals to make an optimized, almost quite literal heal bot. And oh boy, do I have the build for you. Starting things off with race, there are actually two different races that I want to take a look at that would honestly make pretty good tech priests. And there is not one that is better than the other. They are both really good for the purposes of this build. First off is the Osama. And I have gone in-depth on the Osama race in the uh, character concept playlist. So if you want to check that out, please do so. However, there, that is not exactly important for the purposes of this build. The Osama has some very good features that we need to consider. First off, the Celestial Resistance does give us resistance to both necrotic and radiant damage. Though that is a very situational, it's still a very good option. Dark Vision is also very good to have with just about any build, although you are only seeing in shades of grey when you are in total darkness, it is still a very good option to have. However, the features that we are actually looking for are, first off, Healing Hands. And remember, remember, this is the upgraded version from Mordenkainen's Monsters of the Multiverse, which means this got a little bit of an upgrade or a debuff, uh, depending on how you see it, with the Healing Hands from Triple M. The Osama has the ability to touch a creature and heal them a number of hit points equal to a number of D4 equal to your proficiency bonus. So starting at first level, you get 2D4. Pretty good. Uh, you can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. So not bad. It's just another healing option, which is something that we are going for. Secondly, the Celestial Revelation is our sub our sub race. The Fallen Asuma, the Scourge Asuma, and the Protector Asuma have been uh, mushed together into this one sort of feature, Celestial Revelation. So instead of choosing a sub race, you just choose the ability. And with that, I would like to choose the Radiant Consumption for this particular Osama. The Radiant Consumption is, was originally the Scourge Osama. This essentially makes you a little bitty nuke. You have a burst of light come out from you and you deal damage to all surrounding creatures. Additionally, you are able to deal extra damage with your weapon attacks and your spells equal to your proficiency bonus, which is really good. The second one is, the second race is Warforged. You get Constructed Resilience, so you have advantage against the Poison Condition and resistance to Poison Damage. You have Sentry's Rest, which lets you long rest, but still be conscious of the area around you. Though the most important part of the Warforge is the Integrated Protection, which gives you a plus one to your armor class. Which, honestly, lets the Warforge win out overall for this particular build, but both the Osama and the Warforge are equally good for this build type. It all depends on your preference. 
Do you want to be able to heal and damage more? Or do you want to make sure that you cannot get hit by attacks? That is completely up to you. Moving on to background and surprising probably no one, we are looking at Strixhaven, a curriculum of chaos for our background. And once again, we are taking a look at the Quandrix student background. This will give us proficiencies in arcana and nature, calligraphy tools, and a language of our choice, and we get the Quandrix Initiate, which allows us to get some spells, two cantrips, and one first level spell, which I will be going a little more in depth at the end of this build. Moving on to our Artificer requirements. For our Artificer, you will want either 12 or 14 levels of Artificer. Again, this is based off of your preference. The infused items will be Wing Boots, Radiant Weapon, Repulsion Shield, and the Replicate Cloak of Protection, which will grab us an extra plus one to our armor class. If you are going for a 14th level Artificer, I would instead go with the Repulsion Shield, Replicate Cloak of Protection, and three counts of Replicate Ring of Protection. The Ring of Protection gives us a plus one to our armor class and a plus one to all saving throws, which is awesome. Having three copies of that for yourself will, in total, with the Cloak of Protection, give you an extra plus four to your armor class, which is awesome. Moving on to our artillerist, our artificer specialist. We're not going artillerist. We are actually going for the next best class, a subclass, the armorer. We get tools of the trade, which gives us proficiency in heavy armor and smith's tools. Heavy armor such as plate, which starts us off at an 18 armor class with this plus five that we currently have from our Warforged, our Rings of Protection, and our Cloak of Protection, that is an armor class of... 22. No. 23. 23 armor class. Why did I get my math wrong on that? A simple addition. Anyway, that's not the point. Armorer spells, we're going with Magic Missile, Thunder Wave, Mirror Image, Shatter, Hypnotic Pattern, and Lightning Bolt. If we go 14th level Artificer, like I said earlier, with the Rings of Protection, we get Fire Shield and Greater Invisibility. Pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Now, if we're just going 12... Artificer, that means we don't have the Rings of Protection. That is just the plus one from the Cloak of Protection, plus one from the Repulsion Shield, plus one from the Warforge, for a total of an armor class of 21. If we have the Plate Armor. Still good. But, there's more. We get Arcane Armor which allows us to nullify the strength requirement of our armor. Armor model Guardian gives us a few cool features to go with our armor, including temporary hit points. Pretty neat. But there's more. At level 5, we get the extra attack feature, and at level 9, we get armor modifications. This is where things get interesting. Because the armor modifications that we want, which are more infusions that must go on our armor and only our armor, are going to be the armor of magical strength and enhanced defense. Enhanced defense at 10th level will give us an extra plus two to our armor class. 
So take that 21 back up to a 23. And it's only going to get better from there when we get into Cleric. Speaking of Cleric requirements, either a 6th level or an 8th level Cleric will do. This is based, of course, off of your Artificer levels. For your Divine Domain, grab Forge. This is because we get the Domain Spells Identify, Searing Smite, Heat Metal, Magic Weapon, Elemental Weapon, and Protection from Energy. If we get 8th level, we also get the Spells Fabricate and Wall of Fire. We normally would get the bonus proficiencies, but we already get those proficiencies from our Artificer. We also get Blessing of the Forge and our Channel Divinity Artisan's Blessing. Holy cow, these are great. I can't remember which one it was, but with one of them, we are able to make our own items by only doing a short rest, a long rest. So we can create more weapons for us to use, so long as it doesn't exceed the gold restriction of this feature. So unfortunately, no plate armor since it is above that gold restriction. We also get Soul of the Forge, which while wearing heavy armor, which is going to be our plate armor, that is an extra plus one to our armor class. Boom, bada, bing, 24 AC, let's go. And with an eighth level on of Cleric, that means we get Divine Strike, which increases our weapon attacks by 2d8 fire damage. This is awesome. And that is not including the effects of Searing Smite, Magic Weapon, or Elemental Weapon. And also, also not including any features that we would add from our Artificer Infusions. Holy cow, this is a lot. Not to mention that we also have the ability to use a shield. So that's another plus two I forgot to add. So that is a 26 armor class. If we just went for 12th level Artificer and 8th level Cleric. That's wild. Moving on. We need to look at feats now. Because this is going to round off our build. We need the tough feat. This will give us a total of 40 extra hit points added to our build. We now have, hopefully, enough hit points to withstand whatever the Dungeon Master plans on throwing at us as the support healer. The next feat we want is Resilient, more specifically Dexterity. This will give us proficiency in dexterity saving throws. So the only way that the Dungeon Master can kill us is by saying, Rocks fall, you die. That is the only way he can kill us at this point. Or she. Or if we somehow not notice a rot grub get into our system. Yeah. Finally. Not as important, but this is still a good feat to have. Shield Master. We can use our shield to basically get evasion. Sort of a half evasion. We either take no damage or full damage. A successful dexterity saving throw while we're holding our shield will give us the ability to take no damage from that saving throw. Dragon Breath, Fireball, ha! You will laugh in the face of danger. Next is the final results. We have Warforged as our race. We have the Quandrix Student background. 
we have 12 levels of Artificer. With the infused items of Boots of the Winding Path, Radiant Weapon, Repulsion Shield, and Replicate Cloak of Protection, we have the Artificer Specialist of Armorer, which gives us access to Magic Missile, Thunder Wave, Mirror Image, Shatter, Hypnotic Pattern, Lightning Bolt. We have Arcane Armor with the Guardian Model. We have an extra attack feature and extra infusions on our Magic Armor, Armor of Magical Strength, and Enhanced Defense. We have eight levels of Cleric with the Divine Domain of the Forge. With domain spells being Identify, Searing Smite, Heat Metal, Magic Weapon, Elemental Weapon, Protection from Energy, Fabricate, and Wall of Fire. Lesson of the Forge and Artisan's Blessing help us create even more stuff. But that Soul of the Forge and Divine Strike give us a higher armor class and give us more damage output with our weapon and spell attacks. To round this video off, we are going over spells. From Strixhaven Initiate, we are getting the Cantrips, Druid Craft, and Guidance. We are also getting the first level spelled Shield, which will give us a plus five armor class for one round when we use this spell as a reaction. That means that our 26 armor class just got bumped up for one round to a 31. Next. Recommended spells for your Artificer. Poison Spray. Shocking Grasp. Sword Burst. First level. Absorb Elements. Jump. Feather Fall. Tasha's Caustic Brew. Second level, Alter Self and Enhance Ability. This will give us some temporary hit points. Third level, Ashardalon Stride and Haste. Cleric Spells, Cantrips, Light, Mending, Told the Dead, Burning Radiance. First level, Command, Cure Wounds, Healing Word, Shield of Faith. This gives us a plus two to our armor class, and it lasts for 10 minutes. Or, over 60 rounds of combat, bumping us up to a 33 armor class. Second level spells. Blindness and Deafness, Lesser Restoration, Prayer of Healing. Third level, Beacon of Hope. We are now able to heal the maximum hit point value of our healing spells. Revivify, our dead comrades have risen again. And the fourth level spell, Banishment. This is the Optimized Tech Priest. I do hope that you enjoyed. And with that, this has been Drehan. And I just now realized that shortened Optimized Tech Priest is OTP. I hate myself. I am offline.